we know there are certain things that have happened. We are all emotionally worked up. The harrowing global events happening to the Muslim Ummah today has left us heartbroken and angry. How should we make sense of all these conflicts? You fail to judge by Allah's light and guidance, then you are, Allah says, you are a kafir, unbeliever. But turmoil in the Muslim world is not new. How does the good Sheikh make sense of the events in his time? regards to the mother of injustices. Of course, you all have guessed what I must be wanting to speak about. There's no way of me hiding it. We can't speak in a vacuum. Just from thin air, speak about a subject, mother of all injustices, it's not possible. We know there are certain things that have happened that makes one to come along to speak on a topic like that. So I get my cue from the Holy Quran. We have been getting excited. In my own country, people have marched. They have delivered speeches and they have made protests in my own country. And I'm sure the similar thing has happened here as elsewhere. People have been worked up emotionally. And at somebody's command, they could have burned down Parliament House. They could have burned the city halls of Durban, Johannesburg or Cape Town. It just needed somebody to spark it off because we were all emotionally worked up, depending upon our own prejudices, our preformed ideas, notions. So Allah Bari Ta'ala tells us in the Holy Quran, He warns us that don't pass judgment, don't jump to conclusions depending on your emotions. So He says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, وَمَنْ لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ فَأُولَيْكَ هُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ If any fail to judge by the light, the knowledge, the guidance that Allah has given you in His Holy Book, he is no better than a perverted transgressor, an evil monger, a wrongdoer. You fail to judge by Allah's light and guidance, then you are invariably, you will be an unjust person, a wrongdoer, an evil monger. And stronger than that, Allah says, almost the same words he repeats in the Holy Quran. He says, if any fail to judge by the light, the knowledge which Allah has given you, he is a kafir, he is an unbeliever. No man, you have black spots on your forehead and you wear the Arab garb and you make hajj and umrah and you fast and do salat, whatever you do, if you fail to judge by Allah's kalam, Allah says you are a kafir, unbeliever. Very strong, very strong. So we have to be on guard. We must ever be on guard that we do not judge according to our own prejudices. So where do we start? I said, let us find the solution to our problems in Allah's kala. So I read to you from Surah Hujurat, verse number 9. Allah says, وَإِن طَائِفَتَانِ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ اتَّتَلُوا فَأَصْلِهُ بَيْنَهُمَا If two parties among the believers, if they fall into a quarrel, facade, squabble, what do you do? Allah says, فَأَصْلِهُ بَيْنَهُمَا Make ye peace between them. Everybody agrees, 100% agreement. No Muslim or no sane person can say, No, we don't want to make peace between our brothers. We all agreed, yes, we must make peace between them. How do we make peace? We want to know what is the problem. We must hear both sides of the story. What is the problem? Why are you brothers fighting? So, we investigate and we find that one of our brother nations, Iraq, invades another brother nation, Kuwait. One of our brothers invades another. One Arab country invades another Arab country. One Muslim nation, another Muslim nation. So, we have to ask the question, is that right or wrong? Establish that first. We must ask ourselves the question, was it right or wrong for Iraq to invade Kuwait? Some of our brothers, they seem to be better informed with history. They have been telling me that Iraq had a right to invade Kuwait. What's the basis? They say that at one stage in the history of Iraq, Kuwait was a part of Iraq. It was Iraqi territory. When the British came to that, the British and the French and the European nations, they went to that part of the world and they cut up these nations, one nation or one vast country into different, different nations. The UAE, United Arab Republics, Bahrain, 
Kuwait, Jordan, and all these was made up by the European nations. Agreed. Agreed. This was a creation of the Western to serve his own ends. But I am trying to remind them, I said, do you know, at that time, when Kuwait was a part of Iraq, at that time, before the white men cut it up into a separate nation, at that time, Kuwait was a part of the Basra province of the Ottoman Empire. It belonged to the Turks. Kuwait and Basra also belong to the Turks. I'm asking, have the Turks a right to it now? You say no. Everybody says no. The Turks have no right. I said, you see, on that same principle, the Jews are claiming the West Bank. You know what they say? This is our Judea and Samaria. Same emotional feeling they have as we say the Haramain, Makkah and Medina is the heart of the Muslim world. Similarly, they say the West Bank is not West Bank. Who named it West Bank? The British. To us, this is our Judea and our Samaria. 2,000 years ago, this was our land. Are you prepared to give it to them? Same principle. We said no. We said no, we can't give it to the Jews. I said, you can't have double standards. The principle is the same. Yesterday, day before yesterday, this part belonged to Iraq, so they have a right. We said then, day before yesterday, many yesterdays back, the West Bank belonged to the Jews. What about giving it back to them? I said, no, 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 no. They have no right. Then I said, you know, we Muslims, we ruled Spain for 800 years. Our landmarks are still there. The Alhambra, Cordova, all these places when you visit, the only thing that is worthwhile seeing in Spain, besides the bullfight, anything else to see besides bullfight and castanets is what our forefathers left in that country. They ruled it for 800 years. I'm asking, have we a right to go and claim Spain because our forefathers had it for 800 years? We Muslims ruled India for a thousand years. On that ground, can you go and claim India? The Dutch, they ruled Indonesia for 300 years. Can they go back and claim Indonesia? They had it for 300 years. And the Portuguese, they had Mozambique, a Muslim territory for 500 years. Musa bin Baik, there was a Muslim governor, an Arab. When the Portuguese, with the superior gunpower, he knocked hells into the Arab and he conquered the territory. And he couldn't say Musa bin Baik, so he said Mozambique. Our land. Have we a right to go and claim it today? The Arabs? They said, well, this Mozambique means Musa bin Baik. This is one of our forefathers. Have you a right? He says, no, no, no. I said, look at the map of India. Look at the map of India. The undivided India when I was going to school. Burma was a part of India. What we now call Pakistan and Bangladesh was a part of India. What they call Sri Lanka, a small nation, was a part of India. This was all India. And then at one stage, they cut off a piece and said, this is Burma. And it shocked me because I'm an Indian. I was born in India. It's my motherland. They're cutting my motherland into pieces. I didn't know that the Burmese were a different nation. To me, Burma was part of India. Then in 1947, the British, they thought the best way out of the dilemma they were in was to cut up India into India and Pakistan. So east wing of Pakistan, west wing of Pakistan. They cut up mother India. Today. It is claimed that the Indians, the Hindus, the Bharat Mata, they have the atomic weapons. Do they have the right to take Bangladesh, make it part of India? Have they a right? Are you prepared to concede that they can take away Pakistan as a part of India and Sri Lanka as a part of India? He says, no. Why not? He says, no, these are all different nations. We have no right. He said, at one time in history, it was like this and it was like that. I says, now we have a scrambled egg. I had it for breakfast this morning. I don't like scrambled eggs. I prefer boiled eggs. But I said, if I were to say unreasonable, I said, nah, I want my host, hostess, to unscramble the scrambled egg. Is it possible? You know, it's all mixed up with onions and all, and that green leaves, coriander. And I said, mm, I don't like that. I want a boiled egg. And there were no other eggs in the house. I said, unscramble the scrambled egg. You say, very easy. You young people can say, very easy. How? He said, you see, we should have videotaped it. Once it is videotaped, we can show it in reverse. And when we do that in reverse, you'll find Ottoman back again to the egg. I said, now boil it. Boil that egg now. <laughs> you know, it's okay for the video machine, for the TV set, for the film. You can put it in reverse gear. But I said, once the egg is scrambled, you can't unscramble it. It's there. What do you do now? So I said, this is the story. If you say, Kuwait must go back to Iraq, 
then all these you have to concede here, there, there, everywhere, and you are in a greater mess than we are at the moment. So Allah says, first is, make ye peace. We agree, you must make peace. The ayah continues. But if one party goes to extremes, goes beyond bounds against the other, فَقَاتِلُوا الَّتِي تَبْقِي حَتَّى تَفِيهَا إِلَىٰ أَمْرِ اللَّهِ Then all of you put together, fight him that transgresses beyond bounds and put him right until Allah's commands are established, Allah's justice is established. All of you put together, put this wrongdoer right and we are all agreed again. Beautiful. All of us now must get together and put the fellow right, whoever is wrong, put him right. If you enjoy this video, please like and subscribe to Islamica to support our efforts. Thank you.